welcome to Jeanette's TV. I'm your host, Jeanette Burke. We are live on location at the Meridian Hall, formerly the Sony Center in Toronto, for the Elevate Tech Conference. And what a conference this is. Jam-packed full of speakers, different venues. Today we heard from Chris Hatfield, who is a former astronaut, and we're soon going to be hearing from Martha Stewart about how to cook with cannabis. There's a lot more coming, and we're so happy to bring it to you, so please stay with us. Hey, so thanks so much for joining us today. Um, let's start with your background. You have a, sure. a fascinating personal story and the story of your founding of BB BBTV. Of course, first of all, it's great to be here. Uh, great to have uh, programs like Elevate in Canada. Uh, my story, look, I uh, was uh, born in Iran, in Tehran, uh, during the war and the revolution. And uh, as, a, as a kid growing up in Iran, uh, we had access to a limited number of channels. So content was very much still rationed. Um, and even though at a small scale, I realized the impact of content. Uh, and funny enough, every Friday we would actually watch uh, Gandhi, the movie, and that really taught me that you can be the change that you want to see in the world. So when I uh, turned 17, I, I decided to move to Canada by myself uh, with a suitcase, obviously very limited English and limited skill. Uh, technical skills and my passion uh, for uh, mathematics and technology is what drove me to study computer science uh, at UBC and uh, really content again played a big role in my life because uh, by you know watching a variety of different shows I learned about the culture I learned the language um, and uh, uh, around 2005 is when uh, I started broadband TV and that really came about because I went to see Yes, and uh, saw kind of all the applications of you know audio and digital audio, and uh, based on the work that companies like Apple and uh, entrepreneurs like Steve Jobs did with products like iPod, and I just knew that video was going to be the next thing. And given my background, I wanted to play a pivotal role in democratization of content, and uh, that's one of the reasons why I started Broadband TV. Um, and you're you're very prescient about that. I mean, now, every day, you, you see it, you hear it, content is critical to everything. Could you, could you just talk a little bit more about sort of BBTV, where it's come from, and, you know, kind of your vision going forward? And then we'll, we'll move over into some of the gender equality. Absolutely. So, look, BBTV, we are a, an enabling platform for content owners. And uh, we create, distribute, manage, and monetize content uh, through a variety of verticals, platforms, and territories. Uh, today, we reach 35 billion monthly views uh, and across the 28 countries that we operate and 10 languages. And you look back at 2018, we achieved 400 billion views. And uh, across the globe, uh, we have an audience of 575 million uh, unique viewers. Uh, and in terms of our positioning, is very positive. Because when you compare BBTV to other video properties in the world, we're the second largest video property in the world, right after yeah. Google. Google is a single platform, we're a multi-platform. Uh, and we represent 57% of uh, the number of unique viewers. And when you compare that to Facebook, uh, we are five times larger than Facebook in terms of number of unique viewers uh, in video. Uh, and at the same time, because we are a media technology company, we also look at you know, how we rank against media companies in the world. And when you look at watch time, which is the number of hours people consume with your content, uh, we rank highest in comparison to companies like Disney, CBS, uh, and even Comcast, with 49 billion minutes consumed across our content every month. Um, so you've had, I mean, you've had an incredible run founding this company, but you've also, I mean, there are few, too few clearly female CEOs, and we can get into talking about you know what makes that makes some of the challenges. But you've you've made this a really central pillar of gender equality within your own company. Could you talk about some of the th things you've put in place and kind of how you measure yourself and your success? Of course, I would say, look, my vision has always been to bid, build a quadruple bottom line business. And what that means is that we don't measure success just based on financial KPIs, but we actually look at our people, environmental and social KPIs. At BBTV, equal is equal. So I'm very proud to say that gender pay gap at BBTV is 0%. 
43% of our employees are female employees, and 46% of our managers are female managers. And uh, this is, you know, again, it's very important because when you're looking at, you know, companies, a lot of times you think about market leadership, uh, you th think about your revenue and profitability, and what you have to understand is that if you care about revenue, if you care about profitability, if you care about market positioning, you do want to make sure you have a diverse organization. Practicing gender equality and diversity has helped us become a higher performing organization. And McKinsey actually had a report where they showed that the companies that are in the top quartile uh, in terms of diversity, they're more likely to perform 15% better than the average median in the industry. Uh, and BBTV is a great example <clears throat> of a company that uh, it really is a showcase that you can achieve gender equality and diversity in the tech sector. So can we talk a little bit about how to, I mean, let's just start with the gender pay gap. I mean, the, f the figures are always out there. They're always startling, whatever it is, 72 cents on the dollar that women make. A lot of things, I mean, you hear all sorts of reasons for it that people will say, and um, whatever the explanations are, I mean, one of them is, you know, maybe women don't um, push for raises as much. Whether or not we agree with them, it seems like a the sort of, what a lot of companies say and CEOs, uh, but so how did you how did you get there? What kind of things did you have you put in place to do that? Right, it's, it's, I think you know. Look, uh, when I look at it from the, coming from the private sector, it's all about setting goals, and it's all about setting goals, measuring those goals, and reporting on those goals. So the same way that we have these key performance indicators for our financial performance, we need to do the same thing when it comes to our people KPIs. And you know, when we talk about people KPIs, obviously gender pay and gender diversity are part of that, but we need to kind of think broader in terms of uh, how we provide benefits. You know, we need to think about the policies that we set across our organization. So at BBTV, the way we've kind of looked at it is, is we set specific uh, KPIs on a per department level. Uh, and each head of the department on a monthly basis gets a report from HR where they see where they stand with gender diversity. At the same time, we actually provide that same report company-wide to all the employees because it's important to have a conversation across the whole company to have everyone engage if you actually have a joint goal, which is you know achieving equality across the board. Uh, the other part of it is I think it also starts with the selection process. Uh, so at BBTV, for every open role, we at least interview two qualified female candidates because this all comes down to your funnel. If you don't have enough, you know, if you don't provide equal opportunity to women, you're not going to end up uh, having, a, you know, enough number of female employees across your organization. So I think that has played an important role. But again, when it comes to equality and inclusion, uh, you know, we are on this journey, and you know, we have also set goals uh, annually. We, we know by 2024, we want to achieve a 50% gender, you know, uh, diversity, uh, and obviously, we want to maintain a 0% gender pay gap across the organization. And every company, again, is different. And I think it's important for you know, uh, the leaders of the companies to realize that it d regardless of where you are, if you do not track and measure and understand where you are, and if you do not set goals based on your own realities, you're not going to be able to make progress. And are there any other policies you, just, you point to before we sort of move over into that you, that you think have been really successful, that you've seen really kind of move the needle internally? Uh, look, I would say that uh, benefits, you know, um, you know, paternity, maternity, I mean, these are like uh, basic things that, you know, we sometimes forget about. And I think a lot of times with, you know, male CEOs, you, don't, you can't even blame them. They just are not in a position of a woman to understand what it takes to be a mother, to have a family, to do as much work at home and also, you know, to be able to uh, be a driven, you know, entrepreneur or an executive or, you know, working at, uh, you know, w within obviously whatever industry that you're passionate about. So I think part of it is like the basics, getting the basics right and, you know, making sure that you have an understanding of what works and what doesn't work. As a matter of fact, you know, at uh, G20, uh, uh, I was, uh, re I represented Canada as part of the G20 Businesswoman Leaders Task Force, and which was a one-year assignment, and what came out of that was a spin-off, which was G20 in power, and Prime Minister Abe in Japan made that announcement, which was really G20 in power is a, a private sector, uh, you know, uh, alliance, and a big 
part of that is how can we make sure we share best practices across companies? Because a lot of times, some you know, we know what has worked for us at BBTV, and if we were to share that playbook with other entrepreneurs, other CEOs, they could de deploy those same strategies. So how can we get to a place where we can actually have shared data and best practices so others can actually benefit from, uh, from, from those shared practices as well? So I, I do, I would like to continue to hear more about your work in the public sector and sort of what you see. And as the representative on G20, I know you've been involved in other organizations. Clearly, gender, achieving gender equality and uh, equality more broadly is, can be done in the private sector, but a lot, governments need to step up too. I mean, there's, there's a partnership. Can you talk about some of the things that you think have been working well when you, when you sort of look across countries share best practices? I mean, what are things that maybe can move the needle the most? Sure, I think, first of all, we need to understand that half of the women in the world don't have their own income. That's a quarter of the potential workforce that can be contributing to a stronger economies. And in Canada, if you look, 50.4% uh, of the population, they're women. And you look at STEM, only 22% of the workforce in STEM uh, are women and you know so we need to change that uh, and you know you spoke about uh, uh, equal pay you know when you're looking at you know m uh, women earn 87 cents for every dollar that their male counterpart earns and that needs to change because if you were to bridge the gap you know when it comes to that lack of equality you know the impact on economy on a global basis would be 28 trillion dollars which is a 26 percent impact to global GDP in terms of increase by 2025. In Canada, that will have a $150 billion impact by 2026. So this is something that is very intelligent for all of us to do in terms of building stronger economies. Now, I think there are many steps that we can take, but if I were to highlight two, one is both men and women need to get involved. We need to eradicate the idea of uh, it's only up to women to actually enhance their economic participation. Uh, a lot of the leaders in the world, as you know, they're men, men, men are in the, are in the uh, decision making position, and we need to make sure that we work together in enhancing and improving the social health for women. I think the second thing is leadership. Uh, and accountability. This is really key uh, in becoming successful. We talked about the key performance indica indicators. We need to really set clear goals uh, across all the different sectors, whether if it's private or public sector, uh, to make sure that we can actually measure, track, and uh, report on these simple, easily consumable KPIs. Uh, because if you're not tracking them, we're not gonna see results. And this is not just about, again, as we discussed, gender pay or gender diversity. This comes to childcare, education, financing, financing to make financing women-led and own businesses. Uh, and it also comes down to having the right set of policies to protect women in the workforce. Uh, and I think we, as business leaders, um, uh, community leaders, and political leader, leaders, need to be held accountable. And I think that's what it takes to achieve that level of equality. And when, when you've been, you, you mentioned, you know, uh, social policies, family leave, you know, on your platform, say, you know, when you think about from what you've seen in different policies in place around the world and what's lacking and what's needed, I mean, if for men and women, as you said, to step up and kind of fight for key things, I mean, what do you think would bring the most change? I think the easiest thing, honestly, that we could do is to pay women equally. I mean, the fact that women earn 87 cents for every dollar that their male counterpart earns is just wrong. And it's 2019, it's time for change. And I'd like to ask you know, the, uh, all the Canadian leaders in this room, are you practicing equal pay? Are you practicing diversity? Because we all play a role and we all need to participate to achieve that. That to me is the number one goal. And so speaking of that, I mean, I, when you think of what, how to, you, you measure things, you have your KPIs internally, I'd love to hear the advice you have for other business leaders of how, how to put this in, like, what should they do? I mean, broadly, they should be looking at the pay gap, clearly, looking at who's in each role. I mean, 
How, what right, is, sure. what are I mean, the you know, look, steps? starts at the top, that? right? Uh, uh, look, I believe that you need to make sure as the leaders, first and foremost, you understand, you know, your data. And uh, particularly at all levels of the organization, manager level, employee level, director level, at the board level. Uh, and then it's about uh, setting realistic goals. The same way that we actually budget for financials, we need to say, have a similar practice when it comes to uh, really achieving you know, equality. You need to set annual targets uh, for each department and again, each level of the organization. Otherwise, and again, you need to hold your leaders accountable within an organization. I mean, one of the things that we've done at BBTV is a big part of the uh, bonus compensation pack. Uh, so as a leader, if you're getting compensated, you need to make sure that you actually achieve uh, true diversity. I can tell you one of the uh, biggest teams at Broadband TV, uh, which is our content acquisition team, um, we, uh, our performance per head increased by a factor of seven from 2014 to 2018. Part of that was because of the technology and value add, and part of it was because of the fact that we actually uh, changed that team from being heavily, uh, you know, a male-based, you know, kind of uh, team, and it was the largest team at uh, BBTV, to actually having a balanced team in terms of female sales, content acquisition, you know, team members as well as, uh, you know, so they, because again, their focus, you know, when you're looking at, particularly in the sales roles, what we've actually organized, uh, realized at BBTV is that uh, the female uh, sales team, they focus on smaller actually deals and they work longer on getting smaller deals. Whereas when we are looking at uh, particularly uh, the male sales team, I mean within our content acquisition team, they're very much the focus on uh, you know conducting and doing larger deals. So I think having that balanced organization is going to get you to also have a diverse uh, set of uh, customers, uh, which is always good for the company. And so we said this at the beginning, but I mean you you still are a far too unusual in terms of being a female CEO of a large company. When we're thinking about equality, I mean, as you said, it, it starts at every level, but there's this question of how do we get more female CEOs, the perspective, what do you, what do you recommend to people in this audience, you know, to women, like, what what is standing in our way, what, what advice do you have for women about who want to Right, I think, you know, look, my advice for women is the same advice that I would give men. Follow your passion, do, do what you're truly passionate about because you're not going to succeed. And I think the difference between men and women is that, you know, men usually go after larger pools of opportunity than women. And I think my uh, feedback is, look, it's going to take the same amount of time for you to solve a small problem as it takes to solve a big problem. So do go after large pools of opportunity because that's where you can actually make real impact. And I think the other part of it is uh, quick failures. I, say, I think as women, we're a bit harder on ourselves when we make mistakes. Look, if you're starting a business, if you're doing things for the first time, you're never gonna get it right. So make sure you understand that it's okay to make mistakes and that you do need to learn how to pivot. Uh, and I think quick failures is definitely our mantra at BBTV, and it's something that has led us to great success, and I think that's something that I would also further emphasize. In addition to obviously hard work and perseverance, I mean, as any entrepreneur, you do need to have those two qual qualities to be able to actually uh, succeed. And uh, so uh, let's get back to this. I mean, here we're talking about achieving gender equality. Let's take some tangible te takeaways. You've mentioned some, but when you, for the people in the audience, whether you're a small entrepreneur, whether you're uh, for a smaller company, uh, working for a larger company, or in the private, uh, in the public sector, what can people do? Walking out of this panel, let's, I'd love to hear some tangible things of how people should measure themselves and what to do to actually make this happen. How can we I walk think the first here? thing is, look, uh, it, it's, it's not just up to the leaders, it's also uh, you know, up to all the employees to go to their leaders, to HR saying, hey, what are our numbers? Are we practicing equal pay? Are, are we practicing diversity? Because the minute the numbers are out, 
you know, you really need to do something about it. And I think a lot of times the biggest challenge is that a lot of the companies are not disclosing their figures. And I think the minute you have an understanding of what those numbers are, the leaders, you know, I, I, I really believe in that, you know, we have many leaders that want to do the right thing. They're just not tracking the right KPIs. And I think as employees, if you're going to get a new job, ask, uh, you know, particularly, you know, whoever that you're in an interview process, are you practicing equal pay? You know, what are your gender KPIs? And then make a decision in terms of, you know, what company you want to join. That's, I mean, that's such an incredible takeaway and so empowering for anybody at any firm you work at. You can, you can raise that question. You can go to HR. If you don't get the answers, you can get multiple people together. Every, presumably everyone wants to know these answers and it's timely. I'm sure it's a timely process, potentially costly process to a certain extent to measure these things and to track them. But if employees are agitating for it, companies are going to have to answer. Yeah, no, you're, you're, you're also improving your employee lifetime value. So I think at the end of the day, it's a win-win for the company and also uh, the employees that are working at the company. So that, uh, that is an amazing one. Could we get one or two more for the audience? To, uh, anything else to walk out of here that they no, should honestly, do right away? Honestly, it's just one thing. I think, you know, sometimes you just give people too many, like, takeaways. One yeah. takeaway, go to the HR, go to the company, ask them what are our gender equality, gender diversity KPIs. And if they don't practice it, uh, push for uh, uh, equality. Simple. Um, well, and look, you know, I think that Canada, we should and can be number one in the world when it comes to gender equality and diversity. And I think that as leaders, if we set the right KPIs, we can achieve that. Let's show the rest of the world how we can become number one. Uh, thank you. And one last thing before we go, what's next before you, what's next for you? What's next for BBTV? Can you give us a... Yeah, for sure. Look, you know, um, uh, we, are, we build one of the strongest uh, ecosystems for digital video, and that's very exciting. And as I mentioned, we are the second largest video property in the world after Google, which is, you know, great. But uh, I want us to become the most influential company in the world, and we have the ability to do that. Look, we work with a lot of digital influencers that are influencing audiences, and I think uh, once we understand the values and uh, of what these digital influencers care about, then we can really tap into their audiences, you know, physically and digitally, and uh, better, you know, serve them, activate them, and educate them. And I think this is definitely for us as a ten-year goal is to build the most inf one of the most influential companies in the world. Well, Sharzad, thank you so much. Again, let's just reiterate this takeaway: go go to your HR if you're an employee. If you run a company, look, measure monitor and um, we'll be that much further towards the topic of this panel, how we achieve gender yeah. equality. Measure, track and report. That's it. Thank you All so right. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for being with us today on Jeanette's TV. I'm your host, Jeanette Burke, signing off. Please remember to like, comment, and share all our posts with your family and friends. You will find us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Pinterest, Vimeo, YouTube, you name it, we're there. Hashtag Jeanette's TV. And until next time, continue to be fabulous.